we have the Gamera 3 soft vinyl kit presented by Kyoto. Opening up the box, we can see that we've got a nice little selection of parts, but they all need to get cleaned up. So the first thing we're going to do is start separating out the flare. When I separate the flare, I try to cut very carefully, very slowly, after heating up the vinyl with a heat gun. Angling my blade in ever so slightly so that I can always preserve and protect the detail that's on the outside. This can be a little tricky as you go along and get to some of these thicker sections. The vinyl cuts so much easier when it's warm, but still you get to these little tick marks here and things can get a little bit more resistant to your blade. It's just important to take your time and do things carefully. But we are gonna speed up the video a little bit just to move things along as I continue to cut along and remove the majority of this flare. With the largest chunks of flare now out of my way, I can start fine tuning the edge. I actually shoved a piece of paper inside the cavity of the body so that it wouldn't be quite as mushy and wobbly as I went along and did this delicate work. The goal here is to match up the cut as closely to the ridge of the mold as possible so that I don't end up with a gap once both sections have been joined together. This ensures a nice tight fit between both sections. I anticipate this fit is going to be extra important as the areas where the legs are joined onto the body actually are separated between both the front and back section of the kit. So I want to make sure that that area is as close to the original sculpt as intended. Moving on to the tail section of the kit, I noticed this interesting line in the flare, which I hypothesized was intended as a sort of extra joint section that would lock into the upper half of the body, creating a stronger bond between the two main sections of the kit. So I'm actually not cutting off all the flare, but preserving this extra little piece. While I can't always be sure that leaving on these extra pieces will still fit when I'm joining the rest of the kit together, it always seems worth a try because you can always cut more off later, but I can't add it back on after it's been sliced off. thing to try is just some dry fitting to check and see how tightly my parts are fitting together. In this case, it actually is a success that I left on that extra ridge. The only problem is, are these really small, strange little ramp things? I believe they're part of the molding process to allow for an easy release. So I want to make sure that it's flush with this wedge shape in there. To achieve that, I'll be slicing into my vinyl, following the bottom ridge and the side ridge here as evenly as I can until I've successfully cut off each of those little tick marks that are currently preventing me from joining each half together. I'm not as worried about how this looks because it will be hidden once the tail and the body section are joined together. I mainly just need to remove enough of this excess so that everything fits together tightly enough. I continue to work my way around, removing the little ramps from the other side as well. Testing out my fit, things are coming together a little better now, but I still need to remove the last few smallest ones. 
they're a little smaller, so a little harder to get into in that crevice. But just slowly shaving away at it, I'm able to get a pretty tight fit. The vinyl in this kit is a lot softer than some of the others that I've built in the past, so I need to be very careful about how I'm going to join these two halves together so that there isn't too much distortion and warping. And I can already tell that these long ramp elements are going to be a problem for fitting each piece together. So first, I'm going to get the majority of the flare out of the way. Now I can get a better feel for how close these parts are to matching up and how much of these sections you'll actually see once the kit's assembled. And already I can tell that I'm going to have to do more than just cut these pieces off. I'm going to actually need to somewhat carve the vinyl to recreate the sculpted detail that these are obscuring. To make that look convincing, I'm going to have to use something a little more than just an X-Acto blade, which gives me very sharp, almost faceted looking cuts in the vinyl. I'll actually pull out my Dremel tool and see how grinding some of this vinyl away works. I did a little bit of testing and found that it seemed to work okay. while grinding into the vinyl this way it doesn't exactly cut it away it tends to get almost fuzzy and sort of build up in this strange way that acts a bit like vinyl lint but that's okay because even though it is a little burry I'm able to kind of scratch it and cut it off after the fact and it's giving me a lot more control grinding into this and effectively sculpting it a lot clearer than I was with an X-Acto blade. Luckily this kit has some somewhat craggy details in the shell itself so that'll help uh, all of this blend together really nicely, especially once a layer of paint goes over the top of this. I don't think you'll be able to notice any of the work I did to remove those parts of vinyl. Back to cutting off more flare, doing both of the legs now. This will help me see what kind of a fit I've got going on between the two sections on the body. Seeing the space that I'll have to adhere the legs to, it's not quite like other parts where I have a nice clean platform since it's split between the back and the front half. So I'll have to come up with some other way to make sure that that's a nice strong bond. The section of the lower jaw had some large pieces of flare coming off of the opposite side, which presented a challenge as, again, I had to slightly carve out the pieces as I removed the flare, while still preserving and even recreating the sharp scales that protrude from the side of the jowls. To add a little extra weight to the base of this kit, I filled each leg with a small amount of one-to-one -one resin, including some in the base of the tail. However, for the rest of the kit, I didn't want to add that much weight and still wanted to retain a little bit of flexibility, so I opted to use some of this foam. I had to be kind of careful as it comes out a bit like whipped cream. Very, very sticky whipped cream. As this foam is injected, it slowly expands and over time hardens, which will provide the benefit of having a more structured interior that I can actually use as a scaffolding to join each of my segments together using some dowels and a bunch of epoxy. 
filling the body cavity will be extra important as to prevent that squishy warping that I was experiencing earlier on when I was cutting out pieces. The last thing I want to have occur is any sort of squishing or bending when I'm trying to join the tail and the body section together. Here are both of my segments now filled with foam and some of it cleared away from the inside of the body to accommodate the wedge that will then slide in from the tail. You can also see I preemptively cut a few notches in the shoulders and neck section for when I want to join the head and arms onto the body. Now it's time to actually start using some six minute epoxy adhesive to join these pieces together. I'm currently combining parts A and B of the epoxy as thoroughly as I can. It starts to set pretty quick, so I'm heating up the vinyl one last time so that it has a bit more malleability as I squeeze each part together so that they can somewhat form into each other while they're being glued together. I'm applying a pretty generous amount of epoxy on this wedge, partially because it'll be completely hidden within the body cavity, and also because this joint represents one of the largest bond, structural bonding points in the entire kit. Once again, I'm heating up the pieces, keeping them warm while they're being bonded together so that they can stay a little malleable and form to one another. Now that I've got a nice solid bond between the tail and body section and it's had some time to dry, I want to begin working on joining the limbs. So while I'm able to use these single dowels for the head and arms, I don't really have the same luxury when it comes to the legs. Because of the split, I would be cutting through two, three layers of vinyl if I was going right in the center. So I've actually come to each side and have used these longer dowels and stuck them all the way through, which will then stick a good ways into the leg, bridging the gap between the abdomen and the tail section, almost using the legs as a structural element between the two. Here's a look at the first leg attached. Not so bad considering we've got three different sections of the kit coming together in one place with a little bit of vinyl warping from mold pull. But whatever gaps we're left with will be fixed later with epoxy sculpt. Now we got both legs attached and well, it's a little hard to see. You can see some of the gap towards the back thigh, which I'll have to fix later on. Very clever of them to add that really large joint underneath both of the legs like that. The next step will be joining the arms and the head to the body. So I'm using this drill bit to gouge out some gaps in the foam so that I'll have something to epoxy those pegs into. So wanting to reinforce the bond of the shell and the rest of the body, I've decided to use the same technique of adding some pegs and filling the shell with some foam so that I'm not just gluing around the outer rim there to the outer rim of this. That just doesn't seem like a very strong thing, especially with vinyl as flexible as it is. So I feel like these pegs popping into that foam with epoxy all the way around should add a pretty strong connected piece. Always good to have a rubber band collection when you need some extra hands while squeezing a bunch of very odd shaped pieces together. To fill all the gaps left over from joining all the pieces together, I've actually mixed a little bit of this pigment powder into my epoxy sculpt. And of course it's like a light gray already, so I've tried to match the dark gray of the kit as best as I can. 
now when I go through and add in these small little sections and re-sculpt any of the missing detail, it should match pretty well with the base vinyl of the kit so that um, I won't have any obvious color differentiation once the paint is added on top of that. Though due to all the fine details on the mouth, I won't be able to apply that just yet. That'll have to wait till later after painting is completed. Finally finishing up the putty work. Trying to continue wrinkles across seams. Uh, fill in the little bits of gap between the shell and the body. It's kind of a good indication of how I have to re-sculpt kind of large sections of the flesh folds in order to clear that all up. But in the end, it should all look the same when we're painting everything together. Hefty boy, hefty boy. Quick shout out to the Wonder Goblin, James Sizemore, for sending me a great selection of vinyl Wonder Toy paint to use on this kit. It's so important to remember that vinyl is a somewhat tricky substance to paint on, and not every kind of paint chemically bonds to vinyl. Some don't react much at all, but are easily scratched off or removed, like polyurethane and acrylic. While other paints, like enamel, can even chemically react with vinyl, leaving a sticky, horrible mess behind that you can never really clean up properly. So, using Vinyl Wonder, I could trust that not only would I have a great chemical bond and a long-lasting paint job, but I would also have some of the smoothest and easiest to use paints right out of the bottle. First round of airbrushing, just shading the kit with black and then doing a light rub away so that only the crevices still have any black remaining in them. This will be a great base coat so that I can apply some soft colors to after the fact and have some variation underneath. Using a Vinyl Wonder Metallic Blue combined with a Metallic Green, I have now airbrushed over the top of my Riveway Black, over the fleshier, scaly bits, to achieve this somewhat aqua metallic green coating. At this stage, I'm still just freehanding this with the airbrush. I haven't actually started to use any masking yet, but Coming up next is the gold, and I'm definitely going to be using a mask. I became a big fan of using Silly Putty for quick masks. It made things go really smooth. Full look at all of the completed gold sections. Claws, chest plate, and a little bit of weathering powder between the shell and the body, just to smooth the transition out a little bit and cover up some of the new putty I had to add after some broke away while I was vigorously rubbing away black earlier today. Maybe it's kind of silly to pick a favorite color paint right under the bottle, but... Vinyl Wonder Pearl Indigo is making a strong case for itself. Wow, I like that. Pretty pretty book. Gluing in the upper palette and also a structural wire to attach the tongue to. I also used a similar technique when joining the lower jaw on. There are two wires that attach into the head and go inside of the lower jaw similar to the way I did the tongue. Just forgot to take some photos of that part. But this is pretty much the finished kit. Well, I hope everyone has found this tutorial somewhat informative, even if it was a bit long. And I hope you enjoyed the final result. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch, and please stay tuned for more content.